Hello and welcome to or welcome back to Walk About China. My name is Cash. I'm a British expat who has been working and living in China since 2018. Now my channel revolves around making POV tour videos, whether it be on my e-bike or by foot. But recently I've started creating some videos about living in China. And this is so you guys get an idea of what it's like as a foreigner living here, the costs associated and the things that we get up to. Now, something I've been noticing via social media is that I've been getting a few questions about the cost of living here in China, particularly right now with the, the global cost of living crisis. So I thought I would do a video breaking down some of the common things that you would pay for um, and comparing it to the UK, my home country. So I'm going to be focusing on five things in general. We're going to be looking at housing, utilities, food, general day-to-day -day costs like travel, and then general purchases. So recently I did a tour video of my community and it seems to be getting a bit more attention and people are making comparisons to their homes, whether it be in the UK or the USA or internationally. And some people have asked how much I actually pay for my housing. So I want to break this down, but I need to be very clear that I don't actually pay fully for my housing and I will explain a little bit more about that. So being a foreigner, working in China particularly, I don't know if this is the same for other countries, but as part of our package of coming to work here, we actually do get benefits in regards to our housing. And this comes from our employer. So some schools that I've worked in, I've actually paid fully for my housing, but my current school actually only partially pays. So this current apartment that I live in now is bigger than the apartment that I had in the UK. So in the UK, it was around 80 meters squared. It was one bedroom and did not have any outdoor access. In fact, it was one of these house conversions where there was one apartment in the bottom floor and then my apartment was on the first floor. And I was paying roughly 1,200 pounds per month. I'm not quite sure what that is in US dollars, but I'll try and put it up on the screen for those of you who might be watching from the USA. Now here in China, I have a three bedroom apartment. Um, it's roughly 120 meters squared, so larger than my UK one. And I have a small garden outside, which is approximately 20 meters squared. Uh, my bedroom is en suite, which I didn't have in the UK. Um, and it's quite open plan here, which I didn't also have in the UK. Now, as part of my package, uh, my school pays half my rent. So my total amount per month is 7,500 yuan, which is about 800 pounds per month. And my school contribute around 5,000 yuan towards that. Uh, when I used to live in Hangzhou, which is about an hour and a half away, that was between 2018 and 2021. My apartment was actually 9,000 yuan, so about 1,000 pounds, and my school paid for the full amount. I think it really depends on where you work, what city you live in, and what lifestyle you have here. Um, but let's look at utilities. So I actually want to be very transparent with this because I don't want people thinking that I'm paying up for the video. And I'm actually gonna share some screenshots of some bills that I've paid just to demonstrate that actually what I'm saying is the truth. So my utilities here in China have been pennies compared to the UK. Um, I remember I was paying hundreds towards electricity, gas, and then a smaller bill, water. But here um, I pay via top up for my electricity and then I get a bill for my gas and my water every month. Now, looking at the payments I made in December for water, I'm paying just over 40 yuan, so about five pounds for the whole month. Uh, my gas was 97 yuan, I think. So we're looking at just over 10 pounds for the whole month. Gas, though, bear in mind, is only used for my hot water and my cooking. My electricity is what is slightly more expensive, and that's because obviously all of my electronics, my lights, but also my heating runs on ele electricity. Um, I don't use the underwater, underfloor heating, sorry, here, which is gas powered because it's so expensive. Instead, all of my rooms have an AC unit, and I tend to use that for the heating setting. And for this month, I've just topped up my electricity and I paid in 300 yuan. So I would say about 35 pounds for the month. So very, very cheap in regards to what I was paying previously. So 
Next thing I want to look at is, let's look at food. Food here in China is very, very cheap. If you're going to buy locally, then expect to pay very cheap prices, both from the supermarket, but also eating out. The only time where money starts to add up is if you start to import products or you're buying Western style products or going to Western restaurants. So for example, um, during January, I decided to join the Veganuary challenge, being vegan, and approximately 80 yuan was spent every week, so about 10 pounds. Um, some vegetables you can get for about four or five yuan. So we're talking about 60p at most. Um, however, prior to that month in December, when I was looking to buy some items for Christmas, I decided to splurge out a little bit and buy some imported products. Um, there was a shop here that is dedicated to foreigners. They import from the UK, South Africa, America, and you can buy from them. Now, because of the cost of living crisis around the world, some of these products went through the roof in price. And I don't know if everyone's aware of the product Marmite. I know not everyone likes it. I am a fan. Uh, and I decided to have a look just for a little jar, the smallest jar you can get of Marmite from this company. And because of the price that it was selling in the UK, but then you look at import fees and customs and taxes, it was about £10 for one little jar, which it was absolutely ludicrous. So recently I've been waiting for the cost of living crisis to calm down in other countries before I go back to imports. Um, and I've been staying relatively cheaply with the local food here. Um, but you can get Western chain restaurants. There's things like McDonald's. We have Burger King. KFC is really popular here. Um, but the price comes with the label. So you could go to a local noodle restaurant here and get a full meal for 30 yuan. But if you're going to McDonald's or KFC, you're looking between 50 and 100 yuan per meal. So we're looking at a difference of three pounds to about 10 pounds in a meal. Now, travel is ridiculously cheap here. I was actually really, really surprised and had a bit of culture shock when I first arrived in China, actually, um, particularly with taxis, because being someone who's from London, one of the things that uh, I was really struggling with with travel there was a short trip in a taxi was costing me 30, 40 pounds. Um, here I can get from my apartment to the complete other side of the city for about 100 yuan, which is 10 pounds. I could do really short trips if it's raining or freezing cold and it will cost me two pounds. Um, buses and the local metro or the underground is about 40 pence, 50 pence, depending on where you go. We're looking at about four yuan uh, per journey. I actually have decided to buy my own e-bike because I like the independence of going around. And my e-bike cost me 2,500 yuan, so just over 250 pounds, about 275. And I charge that roughly two to three times a week during the winter because the battery life is not so good when it's cold and maybe once to two times a week during the summer. If I charge my bike at school, it only charges me one UN. So I can fully charge my bike on about 10 to 15 pence. And if I charge it here in my apartment complex, it costs three UN. So we're looking at about 30 to 40 pence each time. Very, very, very cheap. Um, I chose not to drive here. I am a driver and I did drive in the UK. Um, but... I am not particularly happy with the driving style by some people here. I don't think it's as safe as I would have been in the UK. And so I chose not to pursue that route. So I can't really give many uh, costs on cars, insurance or petrol. That's something that perhaps another channel or someone you, you could look into um, could tell you a bit more about. Um, but lastly, it's the general purchases that are super cheap here. Now you can, depending on your lifestyle, find very expensive things and access designer goods or popular brands like you would anywhere in the world. But if you decide to go brand free, then you can get things for super cheap. Now in China, Amazon is not a thing. I mean, it exists, but people don't use it. Um, instead, they have their own version, which is called Taobao. Now Taobao is, a website just like Amazon, you can find any product. I've actually looked on there and saw some crazy things. You can buy an ostrich on there, for example. 
and shops from all over the country. Bear in mind, this country has a huge population, um, will sell their goods and it gets delivered to your door or the lockers in your community if, if you're not home. Um, if you're buying unbranded, you can get things really, really cheap. So next week, I'm actually leaving China for a two week holiday. I am going to Thailand. I'm going to meet my family for the first time in five years uh, due to the pandemic and changing of jobs. I haven't been able to go and see them, but I've just bought new clothes to be able to go and travel. And I think I've purchased about 10 t-shirts, about five pairs of shorts. Uh, I bought a pair of shoes and I bought, uh, bought a few little gadgets for charging and things. And it cost me about 40 pounds for the whole lot. And that's on its way now, it'll be delivered this week. But that gives you an idea of the price that you can pay for certain things. If you do go down the branded route, for example, if you were to go to Nike or Adidas to buy a tracksuit, you're gonna pay much more. Um, but I typically dress unbranded, I'm not a big designer person. And so my fees and my costs are relatively cheap. Now, Schools here and other businesses do pay much more than they would do in other countries. I, uh, as a teacher, earn much more than I did in the UK and have a lot more free time for myself. Um, so having these very, very low costs means that I do have the ability to save a lot of money. So typically each month at payday, what I tend to do is I pay my bills. I top up my electricity, for example, I will do a food shop. I will then send money back to the UK into a savings account that I've got. And then anything left over is what I deem monopoly money. So what I use to spend and what I enjoy and what I can buy things with. Um, it is difficult sending money home back from China to the UK, I, I will admit. Um, due to money laundering rules that are here, it's an extensive process. A lot of the banks in China are still very paper heavy rather than digital. So you'd have to go to the bank branch, you take your passport, there's lots of paperwork you have to take, like your pay slip and your wages and your tax um, evidence, and then they will do that for you. And it will get home in about one to two days, but you are expecting to do um, about a two or three hour stint in the bank sometimes. Um, sometimes it could be really quick and just be an hour, but be prepared if you are coming to China and you want to do a bank transfer. Um, and that's why a lot of schools now will do that transfer for you. They will exchange the money into whatever currency that your home country uses, and then they will transfer it back for you. But not every school does so. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the cost of living here. Um, I am much more economically stable and thriving in this country while I'm working here than I would be in the UK. Um, but obviously this could change in time. We, we don't know um, how the world's going to develop over the next few years. But hopefully this has given you a good insight into where I live and why I've been here for so long instead of going back to the UK. And perhaps if you are looking to live abroad in the future, you may look into a country that has the same sort of lifestyle. Thank you. See you next time.